Light is the hope to all who seek Light is the way when moments are bleak So look up to the skies The light is Jesus Christ And all who seek will find Na 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 A warm welcome to each one of you watching this series of wisdom reflections of the Patriarchal Seminary of Rashal. I am Father Ashley Alfonso and I will be reflecting on the topic The Spirituality of a Diocesan Priest. Before I could speak about the spirituality of a diocesan priest, in brief, let us first understand what spirituality is. Father Jordan Auman in his book Spiritual Theology says, Spirituality refers to any religious or ethical value that is concretized as an attitude or spirit from which one's actions flow. This concept of spirituality is not restricted to any religion. It applies to any person who has a belief in the divine or transcendent and fashions a lifestyle according to one's religious convictions. In this context, one can speak of Zen, Buddhist, Jewish, Muslim spirituality as well as Christian spirituality. Christian spirituality presupposes a way of life and not an abstract philosophy or a code of beliefs. To be a Christian is to live in a certain way and that way is Jesus. Down the centuries, several people have walked the path of Jesus. Each path walked is itself a spirituality or a way of life. Hence, we have spiritualities of great founders of religious congregations such as St. Francis of Assisi, St. Dominic Guzman, St. Ignatius of Loyola and so forth. Normally, it is easy to talk about Franciscan, Dominican or Jesuit spirituality because their spiritualities flow from the original vision of or the path walked by their founders. But when it comes to diocesan priests, there seems to be a difficulty to speak of a diocesan spirituality. Hence the question arises, is there a specific diocesan spirituality or a spirituality of a diocesan priest? Who is a diocesan priest? A priest incarnated in a diocese is a diocesan priest. And what is a diocese? According to the Code of Canon Law number 369, a diocese is a portion of the people of God which is entrusted to a bishop for him to shepherd with the cooperation of the presbyterium so that adhering to its pastor and gathered by him in the Holy Spirit through the Gospel and the Eucharist it constitutes a particular church in which the one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church of Christ is truly present and operative. Thus, we can say that a diocesan priest is basically entrusted to be a shepherd of his local church or parish in the mold of the one and only good shepherd, our Lord Jesus Christ. The word diocesan stands in contrast with a religious congregation. As a diocesan priest, one is called to build up communion between the members of the local community he is entrusted with. Whereas, the vocation of a religious priest is thought of mainly as the commitment to a community 
and a specific style of spirituality or the way of the society or congregation. Based on the documents of the Second Vatican Council, particularly Lumen Gentium and Presbyterarum Ordinis, then the post-synodal documents like Pastoral Guide for Diocesan Priest in Churches Dependent on the Congregation for the Evangelization of Peoples, Pastores Dabo Vobis, and the research done by several scholars on diocesan spirituality, we can spell out that pastoral charity is the spirituality distinctive of a diocesan priest. According to St. John Paul II, pastoral charity is the virtue by which we imitate Christ in his self-giving and service. It is not just what we do, but a gift of self which manifests Christ's love for his flock. Pastoral charity is therefore both a gift of the Spirit and a task or a call to be lived. In the pastoral charity of Christ, Christ offers himself as a gift from the Father to humanity and commits himself to serve humanity. Hence, the pastoral charity of Christ is a gift as well as a mission. It is this pastoral charity of Christ that is central to the spirituality of the diocesan priest. One can argue that pastoral charity as spoken of in Presbyterorum Ordinis No. 14 and Pastores Dabo Vobis No. 21 is addressed to priests in general, regardless of whether they are diocesan or religious. But what makes it distinctive for the spirituality of a diocesan priest is that the pastoral charity is the constitutive essential aspect of his spirituality. It is through the pastoral charity that a diocesan priest walks his path of perfection here on earth. While in the case of the religious priest, it is not the constitutive element of his spirituality. For a religious, it is the charism of their founder by which one walks the path of holiness. But for the diocesan priest, pastoral charity is the sole focus of his spirituality. It is the pastoral charity of Christ that governs and shapes the life of a diocesan priest. How does a diocesan priest live the pastoral charity of Christ in his life? Firstly, in communion with Christ the Good Shepherd. All priests need to be convinced that their priestly identity is realized only in conforming themselves consciously and consistently to the identity of Christ. Configuration to Christ means a priest needs to put on the heart and mind of Christ. Some of the means for a diocesan priest to configure himself to Christ are as follows. A. The Holy Eucharist and the Liturgy of the Hours. It is at the Eucharist that Christ offers himself to the Father and breaks himself for humanity. Hence the Eucharist becomes an expression of the pastoral charity of Christ. Just as Christ offers himself at every Eucharist, so too a diocesan priest is urged to offer himself in pastoral charity to his particular church at every Eucharist. Hence, Eucharistic spirituality becomes the core of the pastoral charity of a diocesan priest. Further, the celebration of the liturgy of the hours is an extension of the celebration of the Eucharist, where the Eucharist is extended to the various hours of the day. Through a promise made at Diaconate to pray the liturgy of the hours, a diocesan priest shows his willingness to pray for and with the Church of Christ, who prayed and willed 
that all might be one b moments of interior solitude in his public ministry jesus regularly withdrew to be in solitude with his father the rootedness in his father guided him at every moment of his life in the footsteps of jesus a diocesan priest too needs to withdraw himself for prayer in solitude to experience moments of inner transformation and to grow into the identity of jesus his lord and master c life of reconciliation and ongoing holistic growth human as he is a diocesan priest will find himself falling short to the perfection of christ it is through the regular partaking of the sacrament of reconciliation nourishing oneself spiritually through recollections annual retreats and seeking timely spiritual guidance a diocesan priest is called to walk the path of holiness a diocesan priest also needs to devote time to personal reading of the scriptures and updating himself in areas of theology spirituality culture science and technology to efficaciously address the needs of his flock unto Christ d love for mary an effective way to cultivate a filial and fruitful devotion to mary is the daily meditative praying of the rosary nevertheless imitating mary in her obedience to listen and obey the word of god and in her spirit of generous service a diocesan priest can live the life of her son jesus in whose footsteps he desires to walk his path daily e life of detached living presbyterorum ordinis number 17 invites priests to embrace voluntary poverty so that they may be conformed to christ who being rich became poor for our sake that through his poverty we might be rich a diocesan priest does not take the vow of poverty nevertheless he is encouraged to practice detachment this detachment is not just restricted to material things alone but also to power positions and even persons this voluntary poverty of a diocesan priest enables him to be more christ like to devote himself freely to his sacred ministry and also makes him an anti consumeristic witness in a consumeristic world secondly a diocesan priest lives the pastoral charity of christ in communion with the bishop the bishop as the shepherd of the local church to exercise his ministry fully and efficaciously needs to be helped by his priests and deacons under his authority they preach the gospel and sanctify and govern that part of the lord's flock entrusted to them therefore maintaining a warm and trustful relationship with the local ordinary is part of diocesan spirituality when a diocesan priest collaborates totally with the bishop for the love of god he conforms himself to the obedience of christ nevertheless those in authority too need to continuously seek to discern god's will and consider their priests as brothers and friends thirdly a diocesan priest lives the pastoral charity of christ in communion with fellow priests an important aspect of the spirituality of a diocesan priest is the unity of its priest the fraternal brotherhood among the diocesan priests 
includes all and ensures the reciprocal help and availability to support a fellow brother in need the cooperation in the planning of the pastoral work the mutual understanding and reciprocal help between elderly priests and young priests the intercession for those who are ill afflicted overburdened with work lonely persecuted and those who are in moments of crisis the fraternal relationship of love understanding and adjustability among priests especially those living in a specific christian community like a parish parish priest and his assistant or assistants has also great witness value of christian love for the community in which they live in this way the reality of the presbyterium as a communion is realized lastly a diocesan priest lives the pastoral charity of christ in communion with the people the climax of diocesan priestly life is the pastoral ministry a diocesan priest is called to live that is life of a good shepherd in service of his flock pastoral ministry is the primary ministry of a diocesan priest the code of canon law number 276 para 2 invites clerics to fulfill the obligations of their pastoral ministry faithfully and untiringly hence a diocesan priest sanctifies himself through his pastoral ministry acknowledging that the pastoral charity of christ is a loving gift and a mission fulfilled with love and commitment a diocesan priest needs to imitate jesus the good shepherd in his love and service as a pastor of his flock a diocesan priest needs to identify himself with the needs joys and sorrows of his people it may be family problems job issues quarrels and so forth family visits are of great help for a priest to have a personal contact with his flock listening to and reaching out in ways possible and constantly interceding for his flock in prayer will surely enable him to mature as a pastor unto the heart of Christ just as priestly fraternity is important for a diocesan priest pastoral fraternity with his flock too is of great importance in carrying forward his pastoral duties a diocesan priest needs to be observant of his style of carrying forward the ministry of Christ there can be a tendency to be pure authoritative that is one operates like the, like a dictator i tell you do or pure democratic anyone is free to do anything i'll do what i want you do what you want as a pastor since the diocesan priest shares in the authority of christ he needs to consciously remind himself to carry it forward with love humility and patience rather than in arrogance and dictatorship he needs to embrace all his parishioners with love and respect and treat them not as servants but collaborators in fulfilling the mission of christ on the other hand temptation to pure democratism and cheap popularity may lead him to neglect his responsibility of guiding the people in ways of god and to forget his prophetic role therefore his relationship with the people is to be based on sincere love unto christ such a relationship itself will be a testimony of the gospel that he proclaims and will deepen the faith hope and charity of the faithful 
a diocesan priest by his very presence and ministry has to become a sign of the Good Shepherd's presence and love among his people. I conclude, true spirituality is always a lived experience of the ultimate value one perceives. In brief, we have tried to articulate the identity and mission of a diocesan priest. When a diocesan priest makes pastoral charity of Christ, his lived experience or his way of life day in and day out, in communion with Christ, in communion with the bishop, the priests and his flock, he will truly live his spirituality. Diocesan priests that we are, let us strive to grow in our spirituality and serve our people as good shepherds. Thank you and God bless you.